Welcome to the Dam Owner Academy, brought to you by the Association of State Dam Safety Officials, or ASDSO, a series of videos to educate and inform on all aspects of operating and maintaining a dam safely. This video provides an overview of dams, how they're designed to work, some common terminology, and frequently asked questions. The United States is home to over 90,000 dams. Many of those are owned by state and federal agencies, but over half of the dams in the U.S. are privately owned. Dam ownership varies widely and may include private use, utilities, municipalities, homeowner associations, and federal, state, or local entities. A dam is a structure designed to impound water, wastewater, and other liquid-like materials. The purpose of a dam may be to store water for flood control, drinking water supply, irrigation, livestock water supply, energy generation, containment of mine tailings, recreation, or pollution control. Many dams fulfill a combination of these purposes. There are several different types of dams. The most common type in use today is an embankment dam. An embankment dam is termed an earth fill or rock fill dam, depending on whether it's comprised of compacted earth or rock. The ability of an embankment dam to resist the reservoir water pressure is primarily a result of the weight, type, and strength of materials from which the dam is made. Concrete dams may be categorized according to the designs used to resist the stress due to reservoir water pressure. Three common types of concrete dams include gravity dams, buttress dams, and arch dams. Concrete gravity dams are the most common form of concrete dam. The mass weight of concrete, along with the material and interface strengths, resists the reservoir water pressure. A buttress dam is a specific type of gravity dam in which the large mass of concrete is reduced and the forces are diverted to the dam foundation through vertical or sloping buttresses. Concrete arch dams are comparatively thin in cross-section. The reservoir water forces acting on an arch dam are distributed laterally into the abutments. The shape of an arch may resemble a segment of a circle or an ellipse, and the arch may be curved in the vertical plane as well. Now let's look at some common features of dams and how they function. Water flows through a dam from the upstream or pool side of the dam to the downstream side. The embankment is the portion of the dam constructed to hold back or impound the reservoir or pool. The upstream embankment is the side along the upper pool. The crest of the embankment refers to the top of the dam. The downstream embankment refers to the sloping portion of the embankment on the dry side of the dam, sometimes called the face of the dam. Where this slope ends and joins with the natural ground surface is called the toe of the embankment. The portion of the dam that adjoins the valley is called the abutment. When referring to the left and right side of the embankment, it's based on the perspective looking downstream. The principal spillway, also sometimes called the main spillway, primary spillway, or service spillway, is the structure that releases normal flows from the dam. The principal spillway is often a conduit through the dam connected to a vertical pipe known as a riser structure. An auxiliary spillway is often a channel which is sometimes cut into the surrounding bedrock. An auxiliary spillway channel can also be an earthen channel that is lined or vegetated, or a concrete channel. An auxiliary spillway is designed to safely pass stormwater from large rainfall events without overtopping the dam crest. The auxiliary spillway is at a higher elevation than the principal spillway and is designed to release a larger amount of flow. This spillway is sometimes called an emergency spillway, although the preferred term is auxiliary spillway. Dams typically contain a low-level outlet on the principal spillway to lower the pool. The pool of a dam sometimes needs to be lowered in an emergency situation or to perform maintenance on the dam. The low-level outlet often consists of a valve control located at the surface that opens a valve under the water to drain the reservoir. Dam safety is important to all of us who live and work near dams. If a dam were to breach, it could have serious consequences including loss of life, property, and critical infrastructure damage. State and federal oversight agencies have classification systems for dams that are based on the potential consequences of failure if the dam were to fail. What is the owner's role in dam safety? Owners are responsible for safely operating and maintaining their dams, as well as investing in proper maintenance and repair of the dams. 
They're also responsible for making sure they have an emergency action plan in place and know what to do in the event of an emergency. This is important because of the inherent risks that dams pose to downstream areas. Owners can be held liable for damages or loss of life that could result if a dam breach occurs and results in uncontrolled release of water. Why is hiring an experienced dam safety engineer important? Downstream dam conditions and behavior change with time. Experienced dam safety engineers should periodically do the following. Perform inspections of the dam, assess conditions, investigate potential issues and recommend a course of action, develop repair plans, provide oversight when repairs are implemented, and assist with the preparation of emergency action plans. What is an emergency action plan? An emergency action plan is a step-by-step -step guide that tells an owner what to do if they think there is a safety issue with their dam that could lead to an uncontrolled release of water or breach. If a breach is imminent, the plan includes communication protocols, evacuation routes, location of emergency supplies, and inundation mapping. Developing an emergency action plan is a collaborative effort with local stakeholders, and ASDSO has resources available to guide owners through the process. How often should a dam be inspected? Small dams should be informally inspected as frequently as possible. Informal inspections may consist of a visual inspection of the dam by the owner or operator to detect apparent signs of deterioration, change conditions, or other deficiencies. Observations and changes in conditions should be documented during these informal inspections. An inspection by a licensed professional engineer experienced in dam safety should be performed whenever potential dam safety issues are identified or at frequencies required by governing regulators. Most states have regulations related to the required frequency of inspection. What are common problems with small dams? Depending on the composition of the dam, dams can present different and unique challenges. Each dam is unique in its composition, construction, materials, and loadings. Common issues with small dams may include seepage, instability, inadequate spillway capacity, and aging infrastructure. What are normal maintenance activities? Normal maintenance activities include controlling excessive vegetation, preventing and repairing animal burrows, replacing upstream wave action protection such as riprap, stabilizing slopes, and removing debris from structures and outlets. What should an owner do if they suspect a problem with their dam? If a dam owner thinks there's a potential problem with their dam, they should engage qualified engineering professionals to assess conditions. If an emergent dam safety issue is identified, the owner should follow their emergency action plan. If they don't have an emergency action plan, they should contact the state dam safety office and a local emergency response agency. It's important for owners to understand the various components of a dam, how they work, and the basics of proper operation and maintenance. The Association of State Dam Safety Officials has free resources available to help owners operate and maintain their dams safely. Contact your State Dam Safety Program for additional help and be sure to check out ASDSO's website at damowner.org for more information.